Well, hello again. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about some more things to do with the paint kit. Real quick, I do want to reiterate about changes, and you will find them in the actual description of the actual video. Let me go to one of these real fast here. And if you go to any of the videos on YouTube, you will see a corrections area, as you will in the actual video themselves on the dandrix.net forum. Now, Keep in mind that this isn't about pride, this is about all of us getting the correct information, so please do feel free to do as um, my friend here has done and correct me on something that I had mentioned about DDS files needing to be square. That is incorrect, but that is really not something I'm going to change a video over. I also want to point out that Gavin of the Dantrix forum has brought to my attention that the texture.cfg statement that I said in tutorial one about it actually only being needed, you know, to be able to do, as I said about, you'll have all your textures now pointing it. Well, that is true, but you would have to edit that texture CFG because that particular one, and only for the NGX, it does not work that way. It's not pointing exactly that way and covering all your layers. So if you were to follow that tip and not how I actually showed you to do it, then you're going to get a Wonder Woman aircraft with see-through sides. All right, so let's go into the actual paint kit. This is actually a folder icon. So I'm going to go ahead and open this paint kit. This is a freshly downloaded paint kit. And yours might differ over time. You're going to see some, you know, hopefully there'll be a new release of it. You know, who knows? I know a lot of people are having problems opening it, and we'll cover that in a second. But do pay attention to the PDF document that they have. The instructions in it, you know, it's like a quantum leap over the very original readmes that came with it. And you'll be surprised how many paint kits don't come with any directions at all. They just automatically want you to, as a painter, you should know these things. So that's why we're here. So I'm going to go ahead. We are doing the 900. So I'm going to go ahead and go right into the PSD folder. And your particular setup might not be set up like this. You might be looking at something like this. So first thing you want to do is you want to change your views to details. And we want details because we want the date. And that's going to be very handy for us later when we start saving as DDS. All of these will be covered in time. Again, there might be changes in paint kits in this paint kit down the road. And if there is, it doesn't matter. What we're really talking about here is Photoshop and working with layers. It doesn't matter the paint kit. And I still have my reservations about even doing the NGX just because it's such a high quality uh, paint kit. So the first one we want to do, or open, is going to be our Fuselage Master PSD. And you can see there it's 385 megabytes. And here's a misconception people have. They think that when they open up that particular PSD, they only need to have 385 megabytes of RAM. Well, of course I am shooting this video and that is taking a little bit of memory. It actually is just taking a little bit of memory. It's not taking as much as you might think. So look at here. I'm at 4.5 gig of memory usage. My processor is handling it okay. Um, but the point is you might have a long wait to open up your PSD. And of course, being a video, I am going to edit these so you don't have to sit through waiting for these to open. Okay? <laughs> so don't think my computer is, you know, something made from NASA and yours sucks. It doesn't. Mine is just an edited video. Okay? So that said, let's dive right into the paint kit. And I want to cover some things that I've already covered, but I have to keep reminding myself of the new user and things that were difficult for myself to understand. And one of those things is groups. Groups and layers and these cool looking or maybe annoying colors, you know, to yourself. A group is nothing more than a folder like you would have in, say, My Pictures. You might have some flight sim pictures in a flight sim folder, and then you might have your wedding pictures in a wedding folder. That's what these are. Of course, they do have to be stacked, you know, in the correct order to see them, like I explained in video zero. They also have this plus or arrow. 
if you click on that, you'll expand the particular branch and that will show you all the layers in it. And these colors here are just a good way to show yourself what you're looking at when you do have large folders open. So I have PSDs that are over a gig in raw size. And that meaning that when I open up, say, like this 385 megabyte file, it's going to be taking up possibly a gig and a half or more memory because once that is open, the layer is now uncompressed and it is showing you visually so the data is now being also being worked to where you have transparency per layer. You have blending modes that it is processing. So those things, once they're actually in memory, those do take up more data than the actual raw size of the image. But I have PSDs to where early on I saved them as, say, a higher bit size has quadrupled. And even today on my computer, I just can't open them because they're so huge. So I save them and keep hoping for better computers. So moving back to this, when we have these colors, we're keeping ourselves organized. And the paint kit I was talking about, or the PSD file I was talking about, when I collapse or open up, expand that group, I have a lot of scrolling to do because, you know, there's so many layers. So that's where this comes in handy. This helps once you're zoom, once you have like a lot of different things open, it helps you know exactly what group you're still in. Okay? So hopefully that makes sense. If not, it will later on. The visibility, of course, we covered. And right now we are looking at the very top layer here, which is the what is what. And this is a great layer. This particular layer helps quickly show you, you know, what, you know, is what. So there you go. It's named perfectly. And it also, if we were to drag this out, we would see that it, the group itself says turn off. Well, that's telling you, you know, to turn off. Well, you might see a layer further down that says paint layer. And then when you open it, it says paint here. And, of course, that's telling you where to paint. You don't have to follow this. You could delete that if you want. I mean, that it's really just trying to help you, as a new painter, get going and where to put things. Okay, so hopefully that all makes sense. So, as I said in video zero, if you're not familiar with the particular paint kit that you're working with, take the time to go through each one and find things that you're going to want to do. So, why do I not want to do the paint tutorial on the NGX? Well, it's just, it's not that I don't want to, it's that tutorial reasons and teaching reasons, it kind of leaves a lot out. It kind of leaves or makes it too easy for people. And they look over here and they see the amount of groups and layers and they think, oh my god, what a complicated paint kit. I much, you know, prefer the Cessna 172 one that I have that only has four layers. So much easier. Okay. It might be so much easier in appearance, but it's actually a much cheaper paint kit. And I don't mean to put down anybody that created those. I'm just saying that what you're dealing with here is the masterpiece of all paint kits. I've learned a great deal in PMDG's paint kits, and I have thousands of dollars in training on After Effects, Flash, all the Adobe suites, and it's... I can't even tell you how much I've learned just from their paint kits. So when I click on a particular layer and I'm trying to figure out why or how they did what they did, they don't hide that from me. I can click on that and go up here to the blending mode, and I can see that they set it to multiply. I can look over here to the opacity and the fill and I can see what they did there. You know, when you get into the shadows and the dirt and everything else, it really helps. And then it says, hmm, I wonder why they set it to multiply. I wonder what if you know, it would happen if I set it to say normal. You know, and, you know, quickly your mind starts to remember all these little things. And when you do that, um, you're learning. And that's the beauty of these paint kits. So... New guys make a big mistake of looking at the amount that's there and get confused by it. And it is confusing at first. You know, I'm not saying that it isn't. It definitely is. But just know that you're learning the right way. It's just a hard paint kit to start a tutorial in because of that one complexity might turn a lot of 
would be painters away, and it shouldn't. It should be cherished and very much appreciated. So the first thing I want to do is also explain that anybody can correct something someone else has done, or anybody can improve upon what somebody else has done. I can't think of anything I've ever created to where somebody can't take what I've done and take it a step further. It doesn't mean anything insulting to the actual author of it, not at all. And it's not to say, oh, you missed this or you missed that. It is nothing more than to help you do it, because I can't think of anything I've ever done that's perfect. So keep that in mind as I do mention a few corrections here and there as we go. And of course, some of them are just particular tastes for myself, for my particular paint. Take note of this one particular correction. And I'm going to go ahead and back up here to my paint guides and turn that visibility off. And I'm going to go ahead and change my view for this by pressing F and then F again. And you'll see these green lines going through here. And what these are is these are guides. And these guides help you later select something like the marquee tool and drag a selection and you'll see that it snaps to the guide. And what that's doing is trying to help you later move the sections to their corresponding PSD files to save them for your paint. And we'll cover that later. For me personally, I don't use the guides. I use custom guides that I made that are available on my forum. We'll get to those when we get to those steps. But to change that, go ahead and go into View and Extras, and if you want to just shut them off. And if you do this often, then take note of the shortcut, Control-H. Photoshop CS3, even if you shut them off and save it, you're not doing anything. They're going to come back when you go back to it. So knowing that shortcut, Control-H, is could be handy. Now, if I press Control Eight, or control space bar on my keyboard. Watch my cursor change to a magnifying glass. Now I'm holding that down. I can click once and I'm zoomed in. Or I can click and drag a selection over an area and that will bring me to it. So now that I'm full screen and I'm in here and I'm looking at rivet by rivet, again I can press the space bar and hold it. It turns me to a hand and I can move that to where I want it without worrying about hurting anything. So the first change that we're going to want to do here is I found a little bit of a problem with the door. And that is the fact that it's over the hinges. And I don't want that. So what I want you to do is, well, first, since we're going, we're actually going to be using the 900 and not the 800, I want you to shut the visibility off of the 8 and turn on the visibility for the 9. You'll notice that there aren't many changes. The changes are in the window layout, how many windows there are, and some other things that you can check out, you know, on your own. Some lights and the light rings. The rivets and things like that, those aren't going to change. So, which is one reason why I created all my own rivets and lines that we'll get into later. So now I want you to go down to the fuselage. Expand that. It's group. It's not already. The door outlines. Expand that. And the layer that we're looking at right here is door frame. And you can see that by shutting off and turning on its visibility. And you can see that the hinges here are right now below it. And we're going to correct that by dragging that. And for now, I'm just going to drag it to the bottom. Okay, so now my hinges are above it. And that's what I want. Or that's what you may want. In my particular paint, it's not going to make much of a difference. But we'll get into that shortly. So now... I don't want this for my base, okay? And so you're not looking at it upside down. If you come over here to the navigation window, or the navigator, you can actually navigate this way. And this way is so much better in a lot of time, a lot of cases. If I'm dragging on a very complex paint that I've done, right now there's nothing going on, and I'm all cached up. Everything's loaded in memory, so it's smooth. But later it might not, and it's smoother on your computer to navigate this way. So keep that in mind. So right now I want to change this bottom plate. And the doorstep plate type 2, which is called right now, I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. 
and the one right above it, doorstep plate type 1, I'm going to shut off. This is the one that I want. So I'm going to now go back up to that top door using my navigator. And we can see that it's kind of overlapping my door frame. Well, I don't want that. So how do we correct that? Well, the same way we I showed you in the very first tutorial. If you're not comfortable with using layers or understand the fact that the one that's on top of the other is going to be covering the other in the image, please do download the steak and tater zip that's in the first video, video zero. I'm going to now drag the door frame and put that above doorstep plate type 2. So now I'm overlapped on top of it. And that's what I want. Okay, so now if I check my other doors, I can see that it's the same throughout all of them. And things look good. All right, so now again, to keep things short and simple, and each video as short and basic as possible, I will see you in the next video. And see you then.